Hello and welcome to the Snippets of Leadership podcast. Welcome back. This is the fourth and last episode of my Emotional Intelligence mini-series. Whatever piece you're still missing to close the circle, we're going to place it today. So today is all about the last step, what it takes and how to cause a change in your team's emotional state. And just to review why you should care about this, it's because negative emotions can bring anyone, including your team members, to complete paralysis. If someone is taken over by something negative that happened to them, there is a real chance that that person will end, up, uh, will end up having blurred thoughts, unclear judgments, and low levels of energy. That is a real chance. First of all, this isn't healthy. And as you are an ambassador of your organization for that person, you represent that company, whether you like it or not, it's your job to notice and do something. Second, you should care about this person's well-being. If you absolutely don't care about how your team members are doing, maybe there is a bigger issue to discuss. And third, someone in that state won't manage to get anything done. Not only that, they can place this weight on the rest of the team and sink your whole team's productivity. So there is also a strategic aspect to it. So it's up to you to do something about it. And the only way you will manage to act well in this situation is if you've gone through the previous three steps. Number one, learning how to recognize precisely your own emotions and what causes them. Number two, learning how to manage your negative emotions and not letting them bring you down, but knowing how to bounce back. And number three, learning how to identify and recognize precisely other people's emotions. Only once you have all that and you notice something is off with a person in your team, you can get to work. And I hope it's clear why you need to have those three other steps down. If you don't, you won't be able to lift the other person up and you'd be navigating blind. And the main tool you have at your disposal right now is called emotional contagion. Which means that in a group, mood flows from the more emotionally charged person to the less charged one. For example, if you're having a great time with a group of friends sitting at a bar and someone else arrives in a foul mood, you will feel how that brings everyone down because the most emotionally charged person is loaded with negativity, which is the same thing that a team member in a bad place emotionally does to the rest of the team. And when that happens, I hope it's clear to you that you can't use logic or talk the person out of it. Logic and rationality don't work with emotions. What works is finding a way to reverse the flow. Meaning, you need to have a strong and positive and solid emotional charge so that your mood will flow to others and not vice versa. I'm not talking, of course, about being a clown, making a fool of yourself about, or any of that, of course. I'm talking about taking in anything you can about what the other person is going through and why. And on that basis, and on the basis of your experience in handling your own emotional state, finding what would work to lift that person up. For example, helping them see the irony in negativity, or pointing out something they could be thankful for. And, of course, what you should point out is that the specifics of it are all case by case. That's why to truly address and engage with someone's emotions, you need to be able to read them well. If you've managed to get them to a better place, however you could, it's up to you to keep them there. And as we've seen in episode two of this season, it's all about enabling them to focus on achieving a short-term goal and at the same time, helping them build their enthusiasm about that task or a larger one at this point. And if it all sounds repetitive to you, it's because it is. You want to cause a change in someone's emotional state. And the tools to do that are the same ones you would use on yourself. So if you want to review them, head back to episode 2 to do so. The key all along is still holding a solid and positive emotional state as you use those tools. 
Emotional contagion, what I just talked about, happens whether you want it or not. So if you engage with someone negatively charged, you want to make 100% sure that you can master your emotions well enough and not be brought down. That's why you need to work on handling your own state first and only then move on to empathy. Otherwise, other people's emotions will get to you and you won't be able to lift others up as you would want. So, to wrap it all up, part of your job as a leader is working with people, not only with tasks. Your emotional state and your teams has a clear effect on how well you are able to work, so it's your responsibility to manage it. And the first steps to do so have to do with recognizing what you are feeling and knowing how to manage your own negative emotions. This will help you uh, be more stable, productive, and most of all, you won't weigh on your team when, the, when you've had a bad day. And the next steps have to do with working with others' emotions, recognizing them and influencing them. And you won't be able to do any of that unless you've done the work on yourself first. And just to point it out again, you need to have enough control on your own emotions because before you try working on uplifting your team, that's what you need to do. The risk, otherwise, is that you can be brought back down with them and end up to square one. However, if you follow the steps I've outlined in these four episodes and you put in the work, you will quickly see the benefits of this and it will be yet another tool in your leadership arsenal. Thank you for listening. My name is Eduardo Bindazane from EBZ Coaching. I'm a leadership and communication trainer and consultant. And if you have any questions about what you've heard in this episode, please reach out to me via LinkedIn, Facebook, or my website. I'll be answering the most interesting questions on the show. And if you know someone that will benefit from this type of content, please make sure you recommend this podcast to them. Thank you and see you next time.